so let's continue. Uh, we had just talked uh, very quickly about uh, Taurus GUIs, and I just found that it might be good to, um, to jump uh, I'll, to, to one, some, something that I had at the, at the end, but it, it might be interesting to, to talk about it now in relation to the previous thing. So there is this uh, thing about the um, uh, big source of, conf of confusion uh, regarding Taurus GUIs, which is when you create a, a Taurus GUI, when you customize a Taurus GUI, uh, there are several different files involved in the customization. And sometimes the, the difference, differences between them are not mm, too clear. So uh, I start by mentioning, as, as I was just mentioning before, before the break, uh, that most of the time Taurus GUI based GUIs are created declaratively, like like we do for for um, for example for the Taurus GUI example zero one in the in the code. Um, when this is what happens when you use the Taurus new GUI command. Um, in this case, as, as we just showed uh, a few minutes ago, um, the GUI definition is stored in files that are uh, in a folder, in a, in a directory created by the Taurus new GUI command. Uh, and these files are created, uh, are called uh, config.py and config.xml. Uh, these two files are essentially equivalent. Uh, uh, strictly speaking, the one that you are always using is config.py, but this config.py may declare a pointer to the config XML to uh, import the declarations in config XML. Um, so um, these two files are only writable by the GUI author. Uh, this is important. This is an important detail. So these files are part of the GUI definition. Uh, and basically, they, they contain more stuff. But the most important thing that they have is definition of panels, of what we call permanent panels. And, and for this, they, they declare uh, the widget class to be used in the panel and the model. And when the GUI is created, this class is instantiated and given a model. But only that. This is the only thing that the config.py uh, stores regarding panels, or almost the only thing. Um, in particular, they don't, uh, these files don't contain information about the geometry uh, of the panel in the GUI or of the GUI itself or any configuration settings. Like for example, if I change, if I change the um, label in a Taurus form, this configuration is not stored in, in these files, in the config pyre or config XML file. Um, and by default, uh, they are not modifiable by, by the user. So if you, for example, this can be shown in the in the GUI that I created before, precisely I couldn't, for example, I couldn't change the widgets here, or the or the models shown by this form because this is a permanent form of of this GUI. Uh, on the other hand, when I created my own form, uh, I created my own panel and I um, uh, drag and drop things here. I could change things here. And I can also modify its contents. I can change the label of one attribute, whatever. I can do this here because this is modifiable because it is not a permanent panel, uh, which is uh, so this the, the information for this panel is not stored in these files for which I, as a user, may not have access. Okay. On the other hand, uh, when you create 
uh, a Taurus GUI, or um, for that matter, a Taurus main window based GUI, uh, and you save, uh, you change something in there uh, at runtime, like I did here, this information is stored in the perspectives file, let's say, uh, which is stored in the user's config directory uh, with the name of the GUI and uh, extension INI. Uh, these files are writable by the user because they will, they are in the in the user directory, and they provide uh, persistence between sessions uh, for all the everything every setting that you have done in the Taurus widget. That's why if now I close this and I and I open it again, I will still see these things uh, change it. Um, as you just see, as you just saw, I can declare, I, I can store information from temporary panels. So if I created a panel here, this the information of the class of this panel and the models for this panel is stored in this user ini file. Uh, this user ini file can be edited by using the taurus config subcommand uh, well this is empty if i go let's see uh, okay i'm going to close because when i close it i will get I will get the information here. So it just says here, it gives me the name of the file where, where it is, where the settings are saved. So if I do Taurus config and this, here I can see the last perspective shown. If I had a store other perspectives, I would see here as well. I would see them here as well. So here is all the information. Uh, and for example, in the information of my form, uh, there are the there is the information on the label that I changed and all that. Uh, probably this was yeah here for example. This is the label that I that I changed. All this is stored in this ini file that is automatically created by, by the Taurus main window or the Taurus GUI. Uh, these files are not completely independent on the Qt version. So if you do a major upgrade of, of Qt, these files may stop being readable. We do as much as we can uh, to try to to keep them compatible, but that is not always uh, possible. So the main, con the main confusion that I see uh, often in, uh, in users is when they do just as I had done uh, Taurus new GUI uh, X, no, sorry. Taurus GUI. When, when I reload this, the, the users that have created a panel just as I had created, and they had stored it uh, to make it, um, uh, uh, yes, when, sorry. Uh, when a user has done this, uh, the, the user is used to see it back the next time uh, the, um, the GUI opens. So basically uh, assumes that this widget uh, is part of the GUI, but this is not strictly true. This, wi this widget, this panel is here uh, as part of a user configuration, uh, not of the uh, GUI that the author of the GUI created. And in fact, 
the um, the information for this panel as i said before is in the in the home of the user and not in the gui installation there directory this means that if another user opens this gui from a different user uh, they won't have this panel uh, if you want uh, a common workflow at least in alba is that users sometimes create their own panels and they use it uh, a lot uh, and they want them to be permanent so for this we have the export current panel configuration to xml this is a, a tool that you can access from any taurus gui uh, here and here you see that this is not exported if i export it uh, the because I have because I have uh, access permissions to the um, to the directory where the um, where the configuration definition is, I, I could just overwrite the the config file. Uh, but if this is because I am also the author of the of of the GUI, but if I was just a user with no access not write access to the to the configuration file of the GUI. I would just export it to some config name, pass it to the author, and the author would just overwrite uh, overwrite it there. But in doing this, it is important to remember that these config py or config XML files they do not store information such as this, uh, for example, this. Uh, things that I that I configured. So these things would still be lost. Uh, the, the panel with the models will be maintained even if the ini file is lost, but this will uh, be lost if the ini file is lost or if or if it is invalidated by a, by an upgrade. This is something that we have to live with and there is no current solution for that. Still, as I say, we do as much as we can uh, to make these files uh, resilient against uh, changes in, in Qt. So this is what I wanted to say about the, um, about the Taurus GUI. And then I go back to where I was, which was Taurus Core. Okay. Uh, Carlos, uh, can I uh, just ask, uh, ask a small question about the upgrade? Uh, of, of course. When, when you have a major of upgrade of uh, Qt, and uh, how do you usually deal with all these users in a file? Yes. In your uh, yes. Um, basically, the first thing is we need to, to get on, on our knees and ask forgiveness from the users that get very annoyed. Uh, because all their GUIs are suddenly not working, and then what we what we do is uh, sometimes we write if if we know what what changed this. Okay, the reason why this why something like this may may break is if in Qt uh, they deprecate a, a class and they replace it by another class. And we are um, we are accessing some some members of the of the deprecated class or the removed class uh, in our for, for doing our for restoring our settings. Let's imagine this is not the case, but let's imagine that the Q label suddenly changed uh, its text uh, property by I don't know advanced text. Uh, and we use uh, we access the text property to store and to and then set text to to restore uh, in our in a, in our configuration. So this wouldn't stop working. Okay. Uh, so if we know exactly what is the thing that is uh, failing, what we do is we use Taurus Config, the the tool that I just showed before, which uh, allows us to edit the um, edit the configuration, and we may just uh, 
typically remove, we, we don't even bother about changing the configuration. We just remove the configuration that is uh, giving trouble and allow the users to reconfigure it. Normally it is uh, quite easy. Uh, sometimes we just decide to, to uh, erase, if, if this is doing this like um, chirurgically is not possible, we just remove the, the ini file. So the next time the user launches the GUI, they find uh, some configurations missing, like maybe uh, the, the panels are not where they are used to see them and so on but they can easily rearrange them. And next time they, they open the Wii, the rearrangement will, will be working. If the user cannot be bothered to do it by the, by the, their self, uh, what we do is um, we do it ourselves. We basically open the GUI. Uh, we, we remove the, the, the ini file. We open it without the ini file so that things may not be configured and we quickly uh, configure it as it was before. Uh, for this, typically what we do is we open it, we open the old version and the new version and, and it's normally pretty quick. And sometimes some, some things can be changed by editing the, um, the ini file and in those cases, we may even be bold enough to create a script with uh, with sed or, or just grepping and fi find replace automatic find replace in in all the widgets and and do the do the additions automatically. But this mm, can only be done in in very specific cases. Uh, other than that, I would say this is one of the main things that would need to be fixed or, or, or improved in Taurus. Uh, there, is no, there is no perfect solution right now. I still, uh, we see that this happens uh, only on, on, on very big changes of, of QT, for example. It can also happen, for example, in changes of Python. Um, I mean, of changing from Python 2 to Python 3, but this is not something that happens often. Then um, one more thing about this, uh, which I, I wanted to mention, uh, I, I just forgot, I am sorry. Um, yeah. Oh yes, uh, you may you may have seen when I was closing the the example zero one GUI. Let me see if I don't do any change. I don't know if it happens. Uh, okay, when I am closing, yes, this is uh, new from one of the latest Taurus versions, um, which is that the before the settings were always saved. Now you have the option of not saving the, the settings, okay? And together with this change, we introduced, uh, we, we now make more, more use of versioning of each configuration property inside the ini file. So each, the, each setting that is stored in the ini file is uh, what we call a configuration property. And it has had, uh, since long ago, it has had the ability to uh, use, to, to declare compatible versions for, for this setting, uh, precisely to make this more robust against changes. Um, this has been possible for a very long time, but we weren't really making use of it. And in the, in the latest versions, we are now finally making use of it. And this makes this uh, configuration, um, configuration files a lot more resilient to changes than, than what they were before. Okay, so this is another, another thing that you 
may probably see in when when the when there is a configuration sorry when when you try to open a configuration file uh, with a version of Taurus that has dropped support for a certain uh, for a, for a given configuration version of a property, you will get a warning about it. And this configuration property, but only this, not the whole file, uh, will not be loaded. Uh, but the rest of the file will be loaded. This is uh, the, the main improvement that we did regarding regarding this. Uh, any other question about uh, the configs in the in the Taurus GUIs? Okay, so if there is nothing, I will move to to Taurus Core. Okay. Again, uh, this is not um, an exhaustive um, overview of the Taurus core, just as with the previous part. Uh, I am just going to focus on things that I think that are less known and, and worth, worth to be known, especially for someone who will be a maintainer, okay? So uh, very, very briefly, uh, as you probably all know, uh, the Taurus core submodule um, provides access to different data sources. And this access is provided by what we call schemes, uh, which are basically Tango, uh, Eval, or Epics, or so. These, some of these are built-in schemes, and some of these are provided as plugins. And personally, I think that all the schemes should be moved to separate uh, repositories, uh, separate projects, and be used as plugins. Uh, the reason for this is, for example, uh, even if we are in the now in the Tango community, uh, someone might be interested in in installing Taurus without all the Tango support. Um, so, for this. It could be as easy as uh, having this separated, and by just installing the Taurus Tango plugin, uh, everything would work just as it is now. But if you don't install the Taurus Tango plugin, uh, you would have a much lighter Taurus. I, I think this would be a welcome improvement for for many people. Uh, also, as a note, uh, very old versions of Tau of Taurus were uh, Tango centric. But since Taurus 4, uh, Tango is optional everywhere. Uh, even if it is built in, it is optional. Um, so when you write any, any code for, for Taurus, uh, I mean for the, for the library, not, not for uh, an end, uh, end user application, but for the library, the code should be um, scheme agnostic. So it should not assume. Um, uh, Tango specific things. This is something that uh, because of the history of Taurus, we still do a lot, uh, assuming Tango <coughs> assuming Tango in, in our in our code, but but we really should take care that no Tango specific code or for that matter any other uh, scheme specific code gets uh, gets uploaded to to the Tango, to the Taurus library. Okay, so how do how do we create a new scheme? I'm not going to actually explain the details. I, I just want to give a few recommendations. When you create a new scheme, basically what you do is that you create a factory class that provides uh, the models. The, the, the Taurus models for your scheme. So in the case of Tango, for example, it would be creating uh, uh, a Tango factory that provides uh, Tango authority members. Ta authority is the database, basically, is the representation of the database, Tango device, and Tango attribute um, objects, and also model name validators. Okay. And 
you register if, if you create this in a in a different repository so it's not part of the taurus project uh, you just register your your project using the entry point uh, the plugin entry point called taurus core schemes okay uh, and as for the recommendations uh, it is better to start from an existing example. I recommend the H5 file example, which is in the Taurus org um, file. Here you can see how it how it is done, and it is in my in my opinion it is the best way of starting. Uh, then you have to design to decide as well uh, how you will map your data source to the different models. For example, when we are implementing the scheme for H5 file, we have to decide whether a value in a data set in, in the HDF5, what, what is this? Is this a device in Taurus? Is it a, an attribute? Well, in our case, it is an attribute, okay? Uh, so this is something that you have to decide uh, beforehand. And then you start implementing, uh, you, you start by implementing the validators, uh, these model name validators here. Uh, this is my recommendation. It's how I have always done it. And I think it's the easiest thing. And it is very, very um, uh, important in my opinion to do this using test-driven development, because if not, it is very easy to uh, start implementing and and breaking uh, things that you have already done when you are doing the different the different things. And here I just want to point that uh, Arturo Hofstadt from from the European Southern Observatory has recently implemented some schemes for for their uh, own uh, control system, and and so he may be able to help if 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 asked. Uh, if you want to, to implement a new scheme. Okay, another thing that I wanted to mention on uh, about the Taurus core is about pint units, uh, pint quantities. Uh, this is, uh, I love a list as the less understood feature in Taurus uh, because for many, for many people, it is just, this is seen as a, uh, as, uh, as a pain in the neck that uh, makes things more difficult in, instead of when we are used in, in, in Tango, in, in the Tango world, we are used to have uh, physical quantities that are just a number. Uh, and the unit is just something that is in the configuration, in, in Tango is just in the configuration. Uh, it's a string that we can completely forget about it. It, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, bother us when we are programming. Uh, but this, of course, uh, may cause uh, problems when you are assuming a certain unit and the user is assuming a different one and there are mismatches and so on. So for this, the, um, in Taurus, we, we have a more, much more strict view on what uh, quantity or what what a, um, a physically meaningful uh, quantity is. And for that, uh, since this Taurus enhancement proposal, we force that the results from our schemes that are uh, integers or floats, and they are meaningful physical quantities, they should be uh, of class quantity, which is a class of the Pines module, okay? Uh, as I said, uh, in Taurus, um, all the all the um, integer and floats uh, related to related to physical uh, quantities uh, should be of this class. This also includes is not only uh, the read value. Uh, that you get from an attribute, but also, for example, its limits, okay? And 
the schemes are responsible for translating. In the case of Tango, for example, the Tango scheme, the, the implementation of the, the wrapper around Tango in Taurus, uh, one of the things that does is that it always translates the a string in the configuration of Tango, uh, the, the, string, the unit string in the configuration of Tango, it uh, uses it for constructing uh, the uh, corresponding quantities together with the magnitude. Um, because uh, of, of this focus in Taurus on, on, on being strict on, on quantities, uh, I strongly recommend not to defeat this, uh, this um, way of working by, for example, just in your code, always taking the magnitude of when you read an attribute, you get the value of the attribute, you get a quantity object, then it is tempting to just have things working as you were used to before by taking the magnitude of the, of the object. I strongly, strongly advise against that. And uh, instead of that, I advise to use uh, always quantities. Here are examples. Uh, again, I think this may because the, the anchor may not be, oh yes, it is okay. So here is uh, some, here is some documentation in the official docs that uh, show you how, how you should work. Uh, as I said, for example, if you wanted to add, if you read an attribute like, like I am doing here, and then you want to uh, add five, okay? you would do it like this in Taurus 3. But this, uh, if this attribute is in meters, uh, this five is implicitly assumed to be meters. Uh, in Taurus 4, this would not work. If the attribute is configured, the, the unit is meters, when you do this, you would get an exception. And in order to get rid of this exception, uh, this is tempting, but I, uh, as I said, it is not recommended. Uh, this is what I see quite often uh, in code uh, here in Alba, for example. But really, really, I advise against this. Uh, instead of this, do something like this. Just import the unit registry from Taurus Core units. And if you want to add, if, if this value is a quantity of, um, uh, in meters, then you can do it like this or like this. These, are two, these two are equivalent. And actually it doesn't need to match the actual unit. It does, it, what it needs to match is the dimension. So for example, you could put here five inches and the, and the sum would be okay. As long as it is dimensionally correct, it would be okay. Okay. So once you get used to work with units, uh, they are very powerful and, and really uh, are, worth, are worth using. This is what I said here, for example. Okay. This is it about... Um, oh, one, one more thing. Uh, as a suggestion for a future uh, improvement in Taurus, I think that one, one thing that, that has room for improvement is that many widgets are not yet using the full potential of pint quantities. So the widgets were created before quantities were introduced and they just basically use the magnitude and forget about the, the unit. Uh, but for example, a Taurus value in, in a Taurus form, like, like in this form, if we had let me let me add a configuration here. Let's say that the unit is millimeters. So as you see, if if this if in the in the Taurus config in the Tango configuration, this ampli attribute was uh, defined with millimeters as as the um, as, 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 as its unit. Here, I could do something like, for example, three inches. 
Okay, and then amplitude is is changed. Okay, so this is one example of a of a widget that is aware of units. But for example, in my opinion, it more, more could be done. For example, uh, this instead of being just a label, it could be a combo box allowing me to choose in which units I want this to be displayed. Okay, this is um, what I wanted to say uh, with this tip. Uh, there are many other widgets that can also do equivalent things. And I think it is uh, uh, worth eventually doing, doing that. Okay, another thing from the Taurus core that I wanted to, to give some attention, uh, sorry, is uh, the advanced uses of the evaluation scheme. I have done several presentations that you can find in the, in the wiki. Let's see. If you go to the wiki, in, in these presentations here, um, these presentations here, uh, I have, or, or, and also these ones, I have already talked about um, the, um, the evaluation scheme. So you probably all know about it, but I wanted to, to just remind everybody that what are the main uses that you can do to, for the evaluation scheme. One, one thing is just uh, for quick testing and debugging, like I did, for example, when I created here this attribute uh, using the evaluation scheme. Uh, another one is modifying or combining other attributes, like for example, adding an offset. So let's say, for example, here, uh, if I add a new attribute, let's say, um, sorry. Here I can do eval and I can reference uh, SysTG test. This one, I can, I can reference it here and multiply it by two, for example. Okay, and I can even give this a name. Let's say, like this. In this way, I will have just the name in there. So I apply, oops, this is not working. Yeah, you need to give the name of the attribute, I think. Sorry? You, you gave the device name, not a uh, Oh, okay, name. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm playing. Thank you. Uh, yes. So we have the double ampli here. So this was 76, this is this, and, and when this is changed, this is changing as well. So this is another use, just, just to uh, adding an offset or, or casting, for example, if we want to, to turn this into an integer. Uh, one, one typical use is, for example, if, if we want to do a trend on uh, a Taurus trend, a plot, you know, uh, of uh, a tango state, we can cast the enumeration for the state, for the tango state, we can cast it to, um, to an integer and see the, the state evolving like this, because otherwise you could not just plot the trend of the state. Okay. Um, so this, this is, as I said, one, one thing that you can use it is for testing and debugging. A uh, different one is for, for modifying or combining other at attributes. As you can see here, I could also uh, use more than, one, more than one attribute, okay? And it can even be another evaluation attribute, for example, eval uh, random like this, for example. Oops, well, there was some, 
uh, there is something that didn't work here, probably another syntax error. Yeah, I, I could go there and debug, but but you get the you get the idea that you can combine more than one uh, more than one attribute. Okay. Um, so, but something that is less known is that you can wrap any ar arbitrary Python module, uh, a variable of any arbitrary Python module. Uh, you can wrap it with the eval to make it available as, as a Taurus attribute. Uh, and this um, can be used as a quick way of, of accessing some different data source without having to write a, a scheme for, for it. You can see this uh, all this in, in this uh, documentation. Okay, where many, many, many examples are uh, available. And also examples on how to, uh, for example, use a module, an arbitrary module, and even use it for having um, read-write evaluation attributes. And basically, any Python property can, can be used as a, as a um, uh, as a read write um, read write evaluation attribute uh, there is also I, I just put here also a link to a tutorial that we did uh, some years ago uh, which also has information on very very practical information on how to use the evaluation uh, for more advanced uses like here for example writable evaluation attributes okay Fine. Um, and now for one interesting part uh, for Tango. Um, in Taurus, uh, when you create a Taurus attribute, uh, this, uh, well, this is what we were having. Ah, okay, look, the reason it was not working before is because uh, the ampli that I created uh, did not match the, um, the units. So here I could just go and say, for example, Q with rand and let's say meters. And it should work now. I'm just curious. Oops, no still the dimensionality error. Well, whatever. Um, so what I was saying here, uh, sorry for the digression. Um, where was I, where was I? Um, yes, that when you create a, a Taurus attribute, is, it is not the same as when you create uh, uh, proxy in in Tango. Okay, if we import, uh, sorry, uh, IPython. If I create an attribute an attribute object here. Um, Ampli, again. Okay, I have it here. If I do a read, this read returns me the, the value, but it is returning it from a cache. I can force the read to false. Uh, sorry. And then you see the um, you see the timestamp for for this value. I will I will um, uh, show the the time. Okay, you see every time I am 
uh, reading it, now with catch a false, I am getting a, a new value or, or at least, uh, yes, a, a new reading. But by default, it is not the case. And it only changes every three seconds. Why? Because this attribute, the ampli, is not uh, declaring that it will push events in, in Tango. And therefore, I am, um, therefore, Taurus will um, actively pull uh, this, this attribute. Okay, this is what I say here. Taurus automatically pulls any Tango attribute by default every three seconds. If uh, two, two things need to, to happen. If the attribute has listeners and neither the Tango system nor the device server is configured to push events on that attribute. Okay, so this is a feature of Taurus. Uh, in this way, normally when, if you are working with a, attributes with devices that push events, then you get the immediate uh, update. But if the events are not being pushed from the Tango side, at least we get um, an update every three seconds uh, automatically without the user having to do anything about it. Okay. Uh, this of course introduces some performance hit and we try to minimize this performance hit uh, with several optimizations. One is that the polling is done in separate threads, uh, that these threads are uh, obtained from a pool of working threads. Then uh, that the Taurus attribute objects uh, and actually all the model objects are singletons. So if I did this, th this is different from Tango. So I have this attribute here, this Tango attribute, but this is a Taurus Tango attribute. Uh, if I create another attribute just like this, or even for example, uh, using, let's say even, even with a different capitalization and here using um, I, I don't know which, yeah, this. Um, so you see, I, I am creating the B attribute in a different way as the how the A attribute was created. But since they point to the same, since both point to the same, Tango attribute, in fact, uh, I get the same object, okay? Um, this means that with Taurus, you don't uh, subscribe. If, if you have the same, um, the same attribute uh, shown in more than one place in the same GUI, you, you are not wasting time subscribing twice or, or multiple times to the... Um, to the tango um, to the tango events okay so this is one of the <clears throat> the optimizations that we use singletons in taurus and another uh, another optimization is that the polling is not done by actually in tango doing read attribute but we group uh, we internally transparently group all the um, all the attributes belonging to the same to the same device, and the polling is done with a read attributes call. Okay, so instead of if if you are showing a form with a lot of attributes from the same device, uh, the polling is not done once for each attribute, but once for each device. Um, but the above strategies, the, the above strategies work well, but they have some drawbacks. And one of them is that if you are showing attributes, several attributes from a device, and one of them, for whatever reason, is slow to being read or even produces a timeout, <clears throat> then this um, this blocks 
the reading for the whole device and not only for the problematic for the problematic one. This is uh, what I am saying here. And another one is what it is in this um, in this issue, which is that initialization is very slow because uh, in order to do all this synchronization also for the units and so on, we always subscribe uh, to the um, uh, so we, we subscribe as, as um, we subscribe to events uh, configuration and change events from the from the tango device okay and and when there are timeouts the initialization of the GUI uh, suffers a lot um, in order to try to overcome these issues uh, a few months ago I started uh, a small side project trying to re-implement the Tango scheme from scratch and trying to make it a lot simpler. So not the current implementation in the built-in built -in implementation in Taurus does, uh, has a lot of logic to like uh, reconnect. If, if it has an error, try to reconnect later on and things like this. Uh, and my my aim was to do a new Tango scheme uh, that could be loaded, uh, could be used uh, together or instead of the old one uh, that did not do all this kind of um, very, very complicated logic. Uh, it was kept more, a, lo a lot more simple but which would work uh, faster. And for this, I would, for example, not group the attribute reads by device, and I would replace the polling threads with asyncio calls, and I would avoid the subscription to configuration events on initialization. Uh, I didn't do it on the, on, on the main uh, Tango scheme because, on the built-in one, because this, uh, will certainly have uh, will certainly break some uh, GUIs that may be using these features that would be uh, removed from the new scheme. Okay, so my idea was just to create uh, a new one that can be used instead of if you explicitly choose it. Uh, this is here. And basically it is the same, but instead of using Tango, in the scheme, it is it uses TG, okay. And if for a given for a given installation you want to make this the default scheme, you just need to use the settings files, as we mentioned very early this morning, uh, and you can just make make it the default scheme, or you can make it even the default scheme only for your uh, session for, for, for your process like this. Okay, uh, this is work in progress uh, and very, very early uh, work in progress. So it's not usable at all yet. And since I am leaving, uh, well, if someone, if someone is interested in continuing with this, uh, just feel free. But I won't be, I, I won't be continuing it. <clears throat> okay, I also wanted to have some words about how to develop uh, new Taurus widgets. Uh, Carlos, sorry. yes, uh, there was a question on the chat. Yes, can... about events. Is it possible to, to subscribe both to change and period events? I'm going to say yes. Um, I'm going to say yes, but I am not 100% sure of this because I'm not 100% sure that the period events are um, are currently supported in Taurus. This needs to be to be checked in the um, in in the Taurus core implementation. But if it is uh, if if they are supported, the the answer is yes. If not, once, I mean, if not, it is just a matter of, of adding 
in the in the enumeration of, of the supported event types, uh, adding the period one and well, it would need to be done, but essentially period period events would be treated by Taurus exactly as as change events. Uh, I am not sure uh, if if they are currently supported. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, this is just a curiosity about like previously you said a, a object and b object is having same memory like that if uh, we run the process in the background for a and b and if i open two new gui where already subscribed data can be shown on two gui so time will be saved is it a possible idea or um I, I may not have understood well, but you meant if you have two different Python processes. Yes. Okay. Or, uh, then no, each for each process, the the um, one the, has to subscribe. The singletons are uh, the singletons are uh, only singletons within a process. Okay. Is that, does, does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions about this Tango events and polling? Okay, if not, I move and, and we can go back anytime. So I was saying about developing new Taurus widgets. Uh, this documentation is fairly new. It, it, it evolved uh, um, recently. Uh, so here you have, uh, I, I, I just documented how you would uh, create a new, a new widget. I think it is interesting to read it. It is in the developer's guide, creating custom widgets. Okay. And uh, well, there is a lot of information here. I don't want to, to get into it. Um, but I want to mention that when you, uh, this I'm going here, here. When you develop a new Taurus widget from scratch, typically you inherit from a Q widget or some derived class. So for example, a Q label and from uh, the Taurus based component class. Uh, this Taurus based component is a mixing class that provides um, various uh, APIs that are expected from Taurus widgets. Okay, so typically it is just multiple inheritance using a Q widget derived class and a Taurus based component or some uh, other mixing class uh, from Taurus QT, QT GUI base. Uh, like for example, Taurus uh, base widget or Taurus base writable widget. But basically at the end it is Taurus base component and Q widget, uh, which provides these this APIs, okay? Uh, you see an example of this here uh, where uh, I am doing like a power meter a power meter class or so something using a Q progress bar to show the, um, to, to, okay, let's, let's show it. Uh, if I go here. So this is the code, I hope it is, there are no problems with the indentation. Mm. Yes, it is here. Ah. There is a problem because of the dimensions of the weight. I hope you see it. This is the progress bar. This is a progress bar widget. Oh, sorry. This is a progress bar widget, and and its value depends on 
on the value of this this model here okay so it's like an in an in an equalizer let's say so this is created by using a standard qt progress bar um, widget and the mixing the taurus mixing this is just uh, because by pure chance it happens that the progress bar has a has a, um, a, a member call set format and i need to to um, uh, rename it so that it doesn't conflict with the set format of the taurus base component uh, here the init is just a normal qt qt stuff and the only thing that makes this a taurus that 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 i had to implement to make this a taurus uh, widget is implementing the handle event okay just by implementing handle event where when i get a new event i i set the value of the of the bar just by doing this i am able to use I, because of because of being a taurus based component i have the set model and i have all the machinery that uh, makes the subscription to the to this event uh, sorry to this uh, attribute which could be also a, a tango attribute of course and and just sends uh, makes calls to handle event eventually okay and for this uh, it is important to understand this this diagram so um, normally as, as i was mentioned you only need to implement handle event to re-implement handle event uh, which is this last uh, method here but what happens is when you are uh when, when you do this code that i that i have shown here when you do this this um, multiple inheritance and so on basically taurus based component takes care of when one does set model it creates a taurus attribute object internally and um and subscribe itself subscribes this this class to the as a listener of this taurus of this taurus attribute model object okay and therefore uh, the taurus polling is working and it is sending events periodically or if this was a tango device server who that that was pushing events you will also get the events here just just as well so when any taurus attribute whichever taurus attribute a tango eval or any other scheme uh, is pushing an event or is sending an event this event uh, goes into the into the event received uh, method of the taurus based component class which in turn uh, calls a fire event which basically just keeps a queue of events and, and is sending them is sending them one after the other. And the, the important thing going on here is that the Taurus based component class is self connecting the fire event. Um, so fire event basically is sending is emitting a QT signal and the, uh, the Taurus based component has self connected the fire event with the filter event here. So there is a decoupling of the Taurus core thread in which the event comes uh, from the QT main thread. This means that if the QT main thread takes some time in processing the event, the core thread is not blocked uh, because of that. Okay. And also that we that from the user point of view they don't need to worry about the core threads the python threads they just need to program it using the qt main thread or other q threads 
but the, decou the decoupling is already done. Okay. This is something that I, I think is worth uh, knowing uh, when you want to get a bit deeper in the, um, in, in the development of, of Taurus widgets. Okay, uh, this, uh, this method here takes care of filtering events because there is an API, the filter API, that allows you to enter, uh, to set filters, uh, set filters in your, okay, uh, here, set event filter in, in your widget, uh, in which you can apply rules on, you can apply rules on the event, <clears throat> on the event source, event type, and event value to simply discard uh, widgets before they are processed further, before they, before they arrive to handle event. So for example, if your widget is subscribed to, to more than one model, you may decide that um, that you don't want to process the events uh, from one of the two models. So you would filter using the event source. Uh, or if you or if you don't want to the, the error events to even uh, reach handle event, you can just insert a filter that that removes that. There are several filters that are already implemented that you can find already already implemented um, in Taurus, and, and then of course it is pretty easy to implement a, a new filter. Uh, a filter is just basically something that gets event source, event type, and event value, and returns either the same tuple or so a similar tuple or a uh, known for filtering. So the filters can also be used to alter the values. Let's say, for example, for, for adding an offset to the value, uh, you can do anything using filters. Okay. And another thing that I wanted to highlight is, uh, is to, encouraged to to be agnostic regarding the schemes when you implement uh, when you implement a Taurus widget. Of course, if you are implementing a widget that you that is done specifically, for example, for one Tango device server, well, it may make sense to just assume Tango that that the that the model will be a Tango device and not a, not another thing. But if you want to create a generic widget that could in principle be applied to other things, like for example, the one I just uh, showed, uh, the one implemented in here, then it is wise not to assume any, any scheme specific uh, uh, characteristics, okay? And for the people in the Tango community, this can be very, easy to, to forget because we are used to use Tango attributes uh, in Taurus and Taurus attributes uh, just um, as sort of the same thing. But um, here in this link, uh, I am pointing to, to several, um, several pitfalls that, that come with this. Let me see. Yeah, for example, here, uh, here. So one thing is, for example, if you, want to, if you want to extract the device name associated to an attribute name, well, first, the, the first thing to keep in mind is that some, some schemes may not have a unique uh, bidirectional um, relation between a device and an attribute. In Tango, attributes always belong to, to devices, but in other schemes, that might not be the case, okay? Uh, also is that the device name 
even if even if you are using a tango, even if you are writing for tango, uh, you should not count the the slashes just to just to create this because uh, well you have things like you may be using an alias instead of a three slashes uh, attribute things like this. Okay, uh, so this is another way you could do. You could just create an attribute. Uh, so this is for checking whether something is an attribute or a, or a device, sorry. Uh, this is for checking whether it is an attribute or a device. And in Tango, you could just count the slices, the, the, the slashes. But uh, in, an eval, in an evaluation uh, attribute like this, there are no slashes at all. Or there might be many slashes because slashes in an evaluation device is a division, so it, you could be arbitrarily dividing all, uh, many things. So it, you should not be counting, for example, for deciding if something is an attribute or a device. What you could do, you could try to create the object, see if you can create an attribute, and if not, try to create a device, etc. But this is, um, in performance terms, it might be too costly. So instead of that, uh, you can just use uh, mm, tools that are provided by, by the Taurus core. Like for example, uh, this. You can get Taurus get valid types for name and you pass the name, then you get a list of uh, element types of device, attribute or whatever that are compatible with the name. Typically, it will be only one. And you can just take the first, for example. Or you can use is valid name, like in here. You can say, is this a valid name? Yes, true. Is this a valid name of type attribute? No, because it is a device. Or you can say, is this a valid device or attribute? Yes, OK. Uh, more things like don't parse model names assuming tango rules. This is what I was um, saying before. For example, don't do get the device name by splitting the attribute name. Instead of that, use uh, for, for getting the device name of a, tang, of a tango attribute, uh, what you should do is getting um, the attribute name validator and asking uh, you, using the UD groups in there. This, this is complex, but you can read about it. Also, don't assume that uh, model names are always lowercase because they are not so in many other schemes. For example, in epics, they are not, uh, they are, they are not case, in, case insensitive. Or in eval, uh, eval is also case sensitive. Actually, most of the most of the schemes are case sensitive, not like in Tango. And anyway, there, there are many of different many different things that you can that you can read here. Uh, the the thing that you should keep in mind is um, try to make the widgets schemas agnostic. And final thing I have here is. Uh, uh, talking a little bit about the supported Qt bindings. Uh, uh, Taurus uh, does not impose uh, a given Qt binding. Qt binding, uh, I'm talking about Python Qt bindings, so either PyQt or PySight. Um, before Taurus 5, we were supporting Qt4, so we supported PySight, PySight, PySight 2, uh, PyQt4, and PyQt5. But since Taurus 5, we removed the Qt4 ones. So we are only supporting PyQt5 and PySight 2. PyQt5 is the one in which most of the development and testing is done. But thanks to Arturo Hofstad, um, PySight, does, PySight 2 sorry, is also getting better support. And it's also being more thoroughly tested even on the releases. And here, I just remind that Qt6 is already out and it should be also supported by Taurus, but it is not yet. Uh, 
supporting QT5, QT6 shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, the difference between QT6 and QT5 are a, a lot less important than what they were between QT4 and QT5. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, Taurus is binding agnostic uh, because uh, what it does is when when Taurus is or Taurus QT is first imported, it detects whether some binding is already in use, and and then adapts to that use, uses the one that is already imported. If it if none is imported, you can um, you you can um, force one or another by using QT API. Uh, as an environment variable, or by overriding a custom setting. You know that you can do this with any files. So if you override this, you can uh, select which of the two bindings is going to be used in case it is not already imported. Uh, this, in case it is not being, is not already imported, is important because uh, this allows you in one application to force which is the binding that you want by simply doing an early import, explicit import of, of the binding that you want. So if you early in your application, you do uh, import uh, from PyQt5 import QT then, or QT base or whatever, this will uh, automatically force uh, Taurus to use that regardless of what are these other uh, uh, settings. So you can do it on a um, per application basis or per system basis. Um, okay, more. Um, yes, uh, one thing is that we are providing this Taurus external QT. Uh, this is a, um, a, it's called a shim. Uh, so that selects between the two bindings currently supported. Um, we recommend that you always import QT from Taurus external QT if you are doing code that that is that should be um, QT binding agnostic. So if you are doing code to be integrated in Taurus, you should never import directly from PyQt5 or from PySide2. You should import uh, QT from Taurus external QT. Okay. Uh, but if you are doing an end user application, so it's not going to be used as a library by anyone, you are free to use uh, to directly import from, for example, PyQt5 if you want. Uh, the advantage of using this in the, in the end user application is that your code will be, uh, the, the style will be more. Uh, standard, let's say. It won't have to adapt to, to the specificities of the Taurus external QT. Um, but if you are doing a plugin that you intend to share, uh, I normally uh, suggest to use this. Okay, uh, the selected, okay, and you can also see which is the the binding that is selected. So if you, for example, do as here, when, when I when I launch this, one of the first lines that I get is this one, okay, where I can see exactly which binding has been selected. And this happens when you import PyQt. So just by doing, for example, Python minus C, import taurus.qt, you can see which is the, oop, taurus, you, you can see which is the, the binding that, that will be imported by default in your system. If I do, just, just uh, as a demonstration, if I declare the QT API as PySide2, 
then you see now it is using PySight 2. Okay. And this is it. More information about the supported bindings is in the Taurus Enhancement Proposal 18, which you should read if, if you are concerned by this. This I already explained. And there is only a summary of ideas for future directions. Some of them are already in the, in the text above. Some of them are only here. So one that I already mentioned is that maybe we should reconsider the annual releases, um, the, the six month um, uh, period for releasing and doing them more, more often. Um, another is uh, this about providing public Debian repos. The coupling uh, tango centric code uh, move move the all the all the code that is still uh, tango specific move it to a separate plugin project. Um, making use of the multimodal API. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention the multimodal API before, and I think it is worth mentioning it. When I was saying that developing a new Taurus widget. Uh, the Taurus widget provide uh, se several APIs. One of them is the model API. This is the API that provides the set model, the um, get model, the um, all, all these connections here. All this is the, the, a, the model API. But very recently, like in Taurus 5.1.4, uh, we added the possibility of Linking one, linking one widget with more than one model, uh, which before it was possible, but it had to be done manually. And now this is part of the official API. So here in this case, for example, we have, um, well, you, you have a lot of information. I, I won't get it, but I, I won't get into it. But just for you to know that now um, the set model can be done uh, for more than more than one model, and then all the all the event handling and all of that will be able to differentiate between models uh, between different models. Uh, this is something that needs to be read. And it is in in this Taurus enhancement proposal. Uh, it it explains everything, okay. And and this this code here. This is in the creating custom widgets. Uh, at the end of it, multi-model support, okay. Model composer, and also uh, there is another one uh, here somewhere. Mm, yeah, multi uh, li list of models as well. So for, for implementing things like the Taurus form that gets many models or the Taurus plot that gets ma many models, um, this was before it was done uh, specifically on each widget that needed to do this. And now there is a common API for doing it in a, in a better way. Sorry about this, uh, having forgotten this. Okay, uh, so what I, what I wanted to say is that one nice thing to do in the future would be to make more use of the multimodal API. For example, Taurus labels could support two models instead of just one. Uh, one could be used for the background and another for the foreground. Um, another thing that really needs uh, some work is the Tango archiving scheme. Uh, we should make it uh, Python 3 compatible so that we can use with the latest Taurus. And uh, we should uh, provide support for the uh, Taurus PyQt graph Taurus trend uh, in a, in, with the archiving, uh, support for archiving in, in here. Um, PyQt graph itself, the module needs some polishing. Uh, so there is 
uh, quite a lot of, of room for improvement there. Uh, the QWT, GUI, GUI QWT module uh, is used for 2D and 3D plots. And in my opinion, it could be replaced uh, easily by, by Taurus PyQt graph. Actually, some work is already done in Taurus PyQt graph, but it needs to be continued. Um, make use of units, uh, this I already mentioned before. Improving the SVG synoptics. Uh, in my latest um, exploration of this uh, plugin, uh, I think uh, it, it has some um, tango-specific assumptions in how it handles the models that should be made more uh, scheme agnostic. Another, for example, another thing, for example, provide better out-of-the-box uh, support for using uh, the Zoom or, or for using uh, attributes as, as models and things like this. Uh, then this is an old one, but it never, I never got time to, to work on it, uh, which is the enum support. Uh, we should get rid of a custom enumeration class that we use in Taurus, and we should use the uh, Python 3 enum uh, classes now that we are in Python 3. And of course, support Qt6, and that's all I can think. I'm sorry it is a bit later than I expected originally. Uh, so I see one I see one question in the in the chat. It says we still use Taurus 4.4 and we would like that GUI is still in development are developed in a way needing minimal adaptation when upgrading to Taurus 5. Okay. Um, upgrading from Taurus 4 to Taurus 5. Uh, if you are using Python 3 <clears throat> and Qt5 in, in Taurus 4, then, uh, then it, should be in, it should be trivial. I mean, uh, the, the difference, the, the reason we bumped the, the version from Taurus 4 to Taurus 5 is only that we, um, is only that, that we, removed the support for Python 2 and Qt5. But everything that works on Taurus 4, uh, at least on the latest Taurus 4, um, everything that works on, on Taurus 4, if it is using Python 3 and Qt5, uh, should work just, as, just exactly the same in Taurus 5. If not, that is considered a bug in Taurus 5 and should be fixed. Um, so if you are in using, you said you are using Taurus 4.4. If you are using Taurus 4.4 uh, with Python 3 and with Qt5, mm, there is nothing special to do. It's just, you, you can just use Taurus 5, report any problems if there are. I personally think I would probably try to run the code in, a, in the latest uh, Taurus 4. So with Taurus 4.8 to see if there are some differences. Now the thing is completely different if you were using uh, Python 2 or Qt4. In that case, my recommendation is to um, first use using the same version that you are using, uh, migrate to Python 3, migrate to Qt5. And once you have that, do the migration to Taurus 5. This is the recommendation. So for, I, I don't know if you are using Python 2 or 3. If you are using Python 2, my recommendation is that you try to use uh, with Python 2.7, you can use uh, Python 3 syntax in your GUIs. Uh, so you can easily uh, support, I mean, you, you, can, 
you can get ready in advance by even if you are using Python 2, uh, start using start using Python 3 syntax. Okay, uh, it says here, is there any conversion tool Taurus 3.7 to Taurus 4 with Qt5? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, Taurus 4 should be mostly backwards compatible to Taurus 3.7 and it gives, um, if you just get a Taurus 3.7 code and then um, and run it with Taurus 4, uh, if you haven't done, I mean, if you are not using any of the of of the APIs that got incompatible, uh, Taurus 4 will use a backwards compatibility layer that it that it has uh, it has built in, and it will just work fine, uh, and will um, just give a lot of deprecation warnings with tips on how to on how to change. This uh, backwards compatibility layer is also still present in Taurus 5, but of course it won't work uh, if you are using Qt4. Um, apart from that, there is not a conversion tool, but there is a guide, which is here. In the developer's guide, there is a Taurus 3x to Taurus 4x migration guide. Uh, and you should read this. It, it explains all this about the backwards compatibility layer, and it also points at what are the typical places where the compatibility layer fails, and, and the things that you have to take into account. So just, just, read, just read this. Okay, uh, I suggest that you just uh, use the microphone if, if you want. I mean, it's fine to, to read from from the chat, but if you have any more questions, please uh, just feel free to, to open the mic. Because this is the end of my talk, so, uh, and probably the last time I will be uh, as available as I am now. Of course, I will continue uh, at least for some time involved in the community, but uh, not as a maintainer, so I won't be replying to new issues uh, as I am doing now. So please, if you have any question. Yes, uh, okay. Is there any tool to migrate configurations in PCK for trends between versions? No, I am afraid not. Um, no. These PCKs are, um, are pickles and, and they depend on the, on the classes uh, that are using one and, and the other. So if the pickling, if the class has changed, the pickles won't. I see, uh, it says uh, that this thing about the pickles uh, is, uh, is preventing upgrading Taurus. Yes, uh, I am aware. We, uh, what what you can do, I mean, um, in the latest in the latest upgrades of Taurus, I am not aware of. I mean, other than from Taurus three to Taurus four, I am not aware that we have introduced backwards incompatibilities in the pickle files. So. Uh, there might be some, I'm not saying there aren't, but uh, in, as far as I am aware right now, uh, there shouldn't be, okay, yes. Uh, yes, 4.1 and 4.4 might, might cause problems in some, in some cases. Uh, I, only thing I can say is we try to, to minimize these breaks. Sometimes we cannot do anything about them because they also depend on the QT uh, being used. Uh, and in what respects, in the, if you are using the latest ones, this should happen a lot less now because of this uh, versioning uh, that, that, we, that we have. So 
now with the versioning, uh, a problem should only affect to a single property, but not the whole file. That's all I can offer, but I know it is a problem and it's not a well-solved one. Uh, sometimes what we do is if we realize how the fix uh, should be, or, or maybe if we can just uh, delete, the, delete the entries that are causing the problem, what we do is we write an script that automatically searches and replaces the, the problematic uh, entries. But this needs a bit of internal knowledge of what, what is failing. Okay, any more questions? I guess everybody wants to go for lunch. Um, so, okay. And load rest of them. Uh, maybe in the future we could think about some XML format. Yes, uh, the problem is that uh, the, the problem with this approach, we, we have already considered it, is that there are, um, at the end, by changing to XML, you will probably run into the same kind of issues. If, if a setting depends on, on the structure of a class, the, um, it doesn't matter whether the setting is stored in an INI file or in an XML, it will still depend on the structure of the class. So it will still be incompatible. Okay. Uh, so as I said, if, if you have any more questions, of course you can ping me on on GitLab or send me an email. I will I will still be receiving all by emails for a few months. And and in GitLab you can you can mention me, my, my uh, user is, my user is CP, C as C dash P. Uh, so just ping me if you, if you have any, any questions and I will try to, to reply as soon as I can. Um, again, thank you everybody. And, and really I will, I will miss the community. Um, this is the, the saddest part of, of changing uh, work, uh, but I hope that we, we can meet at, at some point in, in time. <laughs>